Hey folks, we've been posting a few videos lately of catching fish on soft plastics off the beach or in the surf. And that's fired up a lot of questions from people. What species are viable in the surf? What plastics do I use? How do I rig them? How do I fish them? Where do I fish them? So today we're gonna to try and address a few of those questions and get you guys fired up for a session off the beach or in the surf, throwing soft plastics. Firstly, you can pretty much catch any species that resides in the surf on a soft plastic. It's just a matter of picking the model, picking the size, rigging it right, and putting it in the right place, retrieving it correctly. So let's, let's break it down. So firstly, we'll start with the, some of the smaller species and we'll work up to the bigger stuff. So whiting in the surf. Whiting anywhere can be a nightmare for people on lures just to crack the code and try and catch them. In the surf is no different. They're, they're a tough species to catch. Go catch them on worms, no problem, ideal, probably the best way to target them. But if you can't get worms, you may want to have a crack with plastics. And we've caught plenty of non-plastics, but it's just a matter of nutting out the technique. So for me, I fish a one, one eighth ounce jig head, number two fine wire hook, and a two inch grubs in bloodworm color. So it's got to be a nice small profile to fit in the mouth of that, that whiting, and they feed by sucking that plastic in, just swim up and grab it. So the trick I've found is, when are the whiting most aggressive? They're most aggressive in the two days leading up to a full or new moon, and a day after they school up and they feed more aggressively, and that's our chance to target them on plastics. So the trick I've found is find those beautiful whiting gutters where you normally catch them on bait. So look for a, a nice little deep high tide gutter or a little deep low tide gutter, a bit of foamy water or those deeper holes, and the trick is to keep the plastic moving. Put lots of scent on there, cast out there, and keep it moving. You can flick it a bit as well, shake it, as you whine, but keep it moving because if you fish it too slow, the whiting will come up on it, they'll go, that's not right, and they'll, they'll shy away from it. So for the whiting in the surf, that's your best go at catching a few, keep the thing moving, and you'll also catch other species on it as well while you're doing that, like brim and dart as well. So that's whiting. Speaking of dart, swallowtail dart, very popular species, get quite large, fight really well. Generally when targeting dart, I'll go for a curl tail plastic, loads of action, and a two and a half inch profile is perfect. And I've found this color especially, chartreuse sparkle is, is deadly on the dart. It really pops when you put it into that blue water. You can see it very easily. I'll fish that on a quarter size one for casting distance into the foam. Look for gutters and areas where there's that nice foamy water rolling over the back bank. And I will fish it down to about a one eighth jig head, depending on the size of the surf and the amount of run and the wind that you're dealing with go between a one eighth, one sixth, one quarter ounce. And another trick is if you're catching dart on bait, you'll know you're fishing a ball sinker to a swivel a lot of the time, and then you've got your leader down to your bait. You can actually just snip your bait off if you're having trouble finding pippies or you don't have the bait for the dart. These are extremely effective, also tied on behind your sinker and swivel. So that gives you the weight to get that cast out there, and the plastic will just follow the sinker. So as you lift the sinker, the plastic will come up, you let the sinker drop, the plastic will dive and you'll get some aggressive strikes from the dart. So there you go, that's dart in the surf. That two and a half inch grubs is a deadly presentation. From there, we move to our flathead and mulloway and trevally queenfish, all those other species that we find in the surf and we step up a bit in size in terms of plastics. And there's a few different models of plastics that are available and some different ways that I fish them. So for example, a curl tail plastic, getting into our larger size curl tails, a curl tail has loads of action. And because of the Z-Man's buoyant, that curl tail will stand up in the air. So these curl tails are excellent for prospecting deep gutters, where you really, you're, you're in touch with the plastic, but you're also letting it sit and waft around with the current. And that buoyancy and that tail up in the air will really fire up those Mulloway, Golden Trevally, flathead and other species that are hunting in those surf gutters. So an ideal plastic for prospecting, nice big silhouette, lots of tail movement, very, very good for prospecting those surf gutters and lots of vibration as well from that tail. If the surf gets a bit more ferocious or I wanna cast a long way, cover a bit more ground, then it's hard to go past a jerk bait, jerk bait style plastic. So the difference is we don't have that tail action. That tail action can create resistance when we're casting. So take away the curl tail or a paddle tail style of plastic and just have that straight profile. It casts a long way with less weight. 
it sinks much quicker through the wave. There's no tail action to hold it up in the wave. So you can really get it down to where the fish are. And you can also fish it with whatever retrieve you find works. So you can wind it quick, you can fish it aggressively, twitch it around like a fleeing bait fish. So those guys work extremely well on a wide range of species. And the cool thing is jerk baits are available in a ton of different sizes. So, you know, we can go our 3.75 for dart and tailor and salmon and things when they're feeding on tiny bait. We can step it up to a four inch profile if we're looking for a bit more profile in the water. The five inch is extremely popular for a wide range of species in the surf from flathead to mull away to our queenfish and our trevally. And the difference there, we've got our standard jerk, centered jerk shads profile with the split tail. And this guy here, the streaks has a single pin tail and it's almost impossible to hold that tail still. So it works well both as a finesse bait and also at a high speed retrieve, it gets up a nice little tail shimmy as well. So if you're looking for a long cast, quick to the bottom, aggressive retrieves and those sorts of things, it's hard to go past a, a jerk shad, jerk bait style profile. Uh, especially if you're fishing big heavy surf and a lot of wind, it really allows you to get it out there and flick it around and get it moving for the fish. My favourite though, I kind of hedge my bets a bit between the two, is a paddle tail soft plastic. And a paddle tail, a lot of the fish that you see in the surf will be feeding on bait fish. They're feeding on hardy heads and pilchards and no, mullet and those sorts of things. These guys are a great represent representation of a bait fish. And we have had some amazing sessions fishing the three inch minnows, that three inch profile, especially in natural bait fish colors. So opening night, pearl blue glimmer is an absolute weapon and also that green lantern colour, those really nice natural bait fish colours for chasing queenies and tailor and all sorts of species. So as an example, chasing tailor on these, you might think, oh gee, I'm gonna throw my plastic out, get one tailor and that's the end of it. Being that 10 times tough material, once the fish hits that, you'll often find it pushes out to the side of the mouth and you can catch up to 20 tailor, no worries, on a, on a single three inch minnows. And even when those fish are a bit flighty, a lot of the time they're getting attacked by larger predators and they're on the move and you can't get them to eat, you'll throw slugs over them, metal slugs, and it just spooks them and chases them away. Roll a plastic past them and they can't resist that paddle tail and that slower action. You don't have to fish it as fast and as aggressively. So an example, my wife and I walking the beach one morning chasing tailor. We found a little patch of tailor. They, would, they were really flighty, wouldn't eat a slug. We moved ahead of the school and we were casting ahead of the school, leading the school and bringing the lure back as the school came to the lure. We fished a three inch minnows and the trick was slow rolling the plastic, just roll, slow winding it back in. We'd catch two or three fish, shut down. Change it up, we'd fish a burn and kill. Three fast winds, pause. Three fast winds, pause and they'd hit it. Couple of fish, they drop off again, they stop following the lure, stop tapping the lure. We change it up to hopping. So we were hopping the plastic and bringing it back. And we basically moved along the beach and we switched it up between those three, three different retrieves every time they shut down. And we got about 20 tailor for the morning. <coughs> so that's a definite winner, the three inch minnows. And then stepping that up, a couple more favorites. If you want to fish a bit slower and prospect the surf drains, it's hard to go past a Z-Man swimmers in a four inch and a six inch. They, they're excellent mullet representations. You can rig them nice and heavy to get that long cast and you can fish them nice and slow or you can speed them up and that paddle tail still works effectively. So that's grubs, prospecting deep gutters and fishing nice and slow. Jerk baits if you want that big long cast in wind and swell and you really want to whip it around and try a few different retrieves. And then paddle tail is a good all rounder. If you throw a paddle tail in the surf, you're likely to catch a bunch of different species. The trick a lot of the times for people in the surf, they go, I took my normal gear, I went and fished the surf, and I didn't catch fish. What you need often is just to upsize your jig head. Because you're dealing with wind, you're dealing with current, you're dealing with swell, by upsizing your jig head weight, you stay in contact with that plastic better. So you're really driving it better. You're also detecting those bites a lot better. So I will generally start on my three inch plastics upwards. I'll generally start with a quarter ounce jig head. I'll step up to a three eighth. And a lot of the time, even when I'm fishing fairly calm conditions, I'll still throw a half ounce. I can punch a long cast out and I can really get that plastic moving. So for an example, in these guys, you're gonna go a quarter ounce, three eighth, half ounce, three O is perfect in those for a very versatile presentation. We'll step up in our swimmers 
and our larger plastics will even step up from there. So we'll go three quarter ounce, one ounce, and even a one and a half ounce jig head if you're pitching a big plastic out into a deep gutter and you want to get it down there bouncing through the gutter. Also, don't be afraid to mix it up in terms of rev locks. So we mainly fish our headlocks HD, heavy duty hook, very strong hook. These are another option to switch on the bite when it's a bit quiet. You can run a Revlox which has that blade underneath, which just gives you additional flash and vibration. I normally stick with the silver color in the surf and the Willow is good for running faster, deeper. The Colorado, if you want to slow things down with that more rounder blade. So that's another deadly presentation. And also check out if you're throwing big plackies in the surf, check out those swim locks. So that's a big heavy duty hook on a tapered head that controls big paddle tails and it's got an attachment point underneath where you can attach a treble or you can attach a stinger hook and uh, maximize your chances of, of hooking fish if you are running big plastics through the surf. Scent wise, I always scent up my plastics, especially when I'm fishing slow and a few favorites in the surf, hard to go past mullet, there's mullet everywhere in the surf, bloody tuna and sardine pilchard. They're three of my go-tos when I'm fishing the surf. Rod and reel wise, I just carry a general little seven foot, three to, kilo, three to six kilo spin stick with a 3,000 size reel, loaded with 10 pound braid, 20 pound liter. That's for a lot of the small work. Step up there for an eight to 10 sort of foot surf spin stick, eight to 10 foot around five to 10 kilo, 20 pound braid, 40 pound liter for chasing your bigger stuff. And then I've got a 13 foot or a 13 foot six surf rod loaded with 30 pound braid on say an 8,000 size reel, 30 pound braid, 40 pound to 80 pound litre depending on the species that I'm targeting. And if you carry those three combos with you, you're pretty well covered for all of the, all, everything you'll come across in the surf. So there you go. Hope that helps you out. Soft plastics, definitely effective in the surf, deadly in the surf. Have a look at a few different weights of jig head, a few different styles of plastic, mix it up, find those good gutters and have a crack. We'll see you on the beach.